Hi, I'm Tony from Marathon Mates. You've probably heard that strength training will help you improve both your pace and your endurance. But do you really know what strength training runners need? Well, hopefully we're going to give you some of those answers tonight. So are you ready to run? Let's go. Welcome to the thrilling world of the flying runner, brought to you by the Marathon Mates. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to the Flying Runner podcast. On this episode, we are talking all things about strength training. When I ask around our marathon mates, there are definitely two types of runners. There are those who are very religious about it and include it in their weekly routines, and there are those that don't. Well, hopefully on this episode you might get a mix of all all of those two <laughs> types of runners but hopefully on this episode we can move some of you who may not like doing strength training into the category that actually knows that strength training is good for you and actually start doing some stuff but before we do that as always i'm joined on this episode by tim and tara from team ellis running and <laughs> As always, they've had a big week. So <laughs> sit down, grab a cold drink. Tim and Tara, how's your week been? Um, yeah, really, really good. Um, we did, um, being a public holiday here in Australia, for those that aren't in Australia, um, we had a public holiday on Friday. Um, so Tim and I decided we were going to do our long run on Friday. It wasn't really that long. It was just that we included the hills in it for Boston. So it felt like it was about 40 kilometres and it was only really 13 and a half. Um, the hills around our area are very um, undulating and they don't give up. So the heat was probably about 34 degrees, even at 5 o'clock in the morning. The humidity was about 90-something percent. So we were – well, Tim wasn't. I was definitely feeling it by the end of those 13 Ks. Um, I think we ended up with about 250 metres of elevation in the 13 Ks. So not huge amounts, but it was just that undulating continuous hills. Um, and then we did park run. So we did a long run before park run. Well, not really long, but it was 8 Ks before park run. And our park runs here in Australia, well, Queensland start at seven so we were out running nice and early and it was very very hot again um <laughs> so by the end of my eight k's at before park run I sort of was like oh I don't know how I'm gonna go at park run and I just ran walked my park run but Tim you did quite well at park run even after your eight k's beforehand because you were running with me so yeah, yeah. yeah no, it was good fun I think um you've been a bit generous there we we set ourselves a target that by the end of January, we wanted to be running 21 Ks in our long run. And we achieved that last week. So we gave ourselves a week off this week mm. um, on the long runs, essentially, and then focused on a little bit of hill training, uh, which, you know, I call it a little bit. Tara says it was a lot. I think, what was my average heart rate? About 131, yeah. 131 beats a minute. So I found it okay, but the heat, is problematic at this time of year. I know, Tara, you struggle with the heat. Um, but, yeah, Saturday park run at Redcliffe Park Run. We got to meet up with a couple of our mates. So we saw Terry again, uh, Terry mm. Frew, from episode two or three or whatever it was of this series. Um, so he was there as well as well as another six-star finisher that we know, uh, Giovanna. So, um, yeah, it was good. And uh, Surprisingly, as I'm running past in park run on the road on a bike, was another six star finisher we know in Louise. So, so it's wow. like everyone six stars were hanging around Redcliffe on on the weekend, but uh, <laughs> it was good fun. How are you going, Tony? Yeah, we um, did the same. We did the long run on Friday, and 
we well i got up to i i did 22 and i had a a time in mind and that time was achieved and i was pretty relatively happy with that i wasn't overly stoked but i it was a 20 minute window and i was right in the middle of it so that'll do me for now for where i am sharon uh made it to 16 so she's still a little bit she suffers really badly from the heat so as we were out walking this morning i reminded her that the average temperature on tokyo marathon day is eight degrees celsius so yeah. everything we're doing at the moment is going to really help us for that i was due to make my park run debut on saturday and um i was pretty excited by that and my i was doing it with my young fella and he pulled the pin late friday night and then i just woke up sore so from the 21k and so i um i chose not to make my debut and we went for a nice stroll instead and then uh, i just got back from a little 3k run as well so which was nice to do in the rain but the rain didn't really hang around this afternoon and i was soon back in that sauna so it's just amazing how much you sweat during these times yeah. so now the and interesting thing listened, oh, yep i was just going to say it's really good that you've listened to your body tony and not pushed through to create a further injury so well yeah. done to you for not pushing through on that sore achilles and just taking it easy yeah it's interesting you know, i just mentioned off air with both of you that um i went for my massage with my um my um long-term remedial massage lady nikki and she commented that, that my calves she said your right calf which is my the leg i i busted is smaller and noticeably smaller so when you've been i probably had oh almost 50 massages I, I would imagine almost in that time with nikki and so she knows what my calves look like because it's also the most tender part of my body and um two centimeters smaller than my left hand and calf and i probably underestimated the impact of not doing anything on that leg for six months uh, for six weeks and then getting back into training like nothing happened was probably a dumb thing so um i needed to build up that particular leg because i'm still getting pain as you know in the achilles in the hip and in the glutes and as i continue to do some strength training and some squats and whatnot hopefully that will all start to i i, I would say it's not going to disappear but it's going to lighten the load so <clears throat> hopefully with a bit of luck um my the episode we're going to talk about tonight will be actually beneficial so i, I, I was going to say i have uh, i have some so, somewhat of a positive thing here for you so tokyo has lots of out and back sections and they're all hairpin turns uh, and you always turn on the right. So your right leg will do less of the arc than your left leg. So you'll take less steps on your right leg than your left leg. <laughs> so you'll be okay. <laughs> thanks Thanks for looking at the, at the positive side. There's always a positive. Um, hey, um, but yeah, you just got to watch it, I guess, and you're doing the right thing, building, resting it and doing the, the massage and yeah. getting things work done yeah the other interesting thing um today we were number 10 in the apple podcast running podcast in australia yeah. which is just amazing um really exciting to see that so who knows where we're going to be i think we reached num we must have reached number eight on sunday because when i went to check this morning we were number 10 so just uh, thank you for everyone that's um, yeah. listening to us. It really is appreciated. And it's, um, yeah, no, I was blown away by that. For the first time ever, we actually had a ranking in the overall sports category. So when you, when you think that that includes all sports, all the majors that are out there, all the media houses, and we were ranked at 248, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked pretty with awesome. that as well yeah no thank you to all our listeners that's a that's a big big effort for um 
for our small little team. All what you see yeah. on the screen here is the the production the crew, the the uh, <laughs> directing crew, the, yeah. the on air talent. There is no other help, as you say. Some of those um, media outlets they have teams of people putting it all together. And mm. um, thank you to all our listeners who are listening in, and hopefully. Uh, we're doing something positive, I guess, for all of our listeners and, and hopefully you, you continue to keep listening and, and sharing it with your friends. I'm not sure yeah. what the part of um, everyone, you know, of, of our little podcast that everyone finds <laughs> soothing and relaxing to listen to or if we're actually giving out good tips or if they're just laughing about, you know, what oh, there's Tim and Tara and Tony. <laughs> Let's just laugh, laugh as much as we can. At them. But, look, we do appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's, it's all. It's, a, yeah, it's probably Anything. a combination of everything. <laughs> when you think of some of the, the big name running podcasts out there and, and we're in the top 10 in Australia for them running wise and then mm. you think all sports in Australia there's a huge number of AFL, NRL, rugby union yeah. um, podcasts out there and, and all sorts of other things. Golf is huge as well for podcasts. So, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. The Let's other the thing news. well, before we do... <laughs> For those people that do do subscribe to us on our um, on the podcast platforms, you would have noticed that we dropped a sneaky little bonus episode in on Wednesday morning here in Australia, and it's simply called Out and Back, and it's not a it's not a regular episode per se, so it's always going to be a little bonus episode, and it's just if ever any one of us on on the um, Tim Tara or myself just feel they want to put a little podcast out. That's what it's all about. And it's going to happen on a Wednesday. It'll be launched on a, if it comes out, it'll come out on a Wednesday. So um, just a sneaky little bonus episode. There's another one coming out this week. Um, and, um, yeah, just um, if we surprise some people with that, okay, we didn't really tell anyone. And, yeah, for everyone that listened to that, thank you so much because that um, it played its own little small part, I think. So let's go to the news as Tara has directed me to do. All right, so I'm going to hand this straight over to Tim um, on the run sheet. That's uh, you got to follow the run sheet. We talked about every all the roles that we played. One of Tim's big roles that he plays is getting the run sheet together and getting us all organised. He's also become very handy in the PR and marketing world, and maybe we're going to have some um, some big news coming up very shortly in the coming weeks. Who knows? Keep your fingers crossed for us. Yeah, we'll wait and see. We've got to, we're waiting on some responses, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so over to the, you, Tim. Yep. So going to the news. Uh, Gold Coast Marathon. We talk about the Gold Coast Marathon because it is our local big event here in Queensland where we are. It's also a um, world athletics sort of, uh, it used to be gold label event, but whatever they, they call are. them now, they're one level down from, from sort of the majors. Um, we talked about in the past that they'd sold out all their marathon entries within the first month of going on sale. Well, good news is they found space for another 3,300 runners um, during the week. They have a wait list with about 4,500 runners on the wait list looking for entries. So it's not good news if you're looking for an entry now, but it is good news if you are on the wait list. Um, runners, I think, have until later this week to accept their uh, marathon entry. Um, otherwise, they'll then be passed down to the next people on the wait list. So the good news is they're trying to find more and more spaces and more and more opportunities to fit more runners into the marathon on the course. They are constrained by a number of things, and they explain that in their video. One thing is there's a rather large um, construction site happening down that way for the Gold Coast Light Rail project. Uh, so that really constrains parts of the course, but they're working with the contractor Queensland government and others to try and find a solution to be able to fit more people in there. So it's good news. If you are considering Gold Coast and you haven't got your name on the wait list, go ahead and put your name on the wait list and see what happens. They, they may have more spots available soon. Mm. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll see and, and, and hopefully, fingers crossed for everyone, they get a spot in that event because it is a really good event. Um, on to the Sydney Marathon. So the Sydney Marathon's come out with a... Um, 
a deal, I guess, that's come out in recent times. And the deal is that if you run this year, the Sydney Marathon, you'll get free entry into a future race over the next three years, one, one future race over the next three years of your choosing. So if you want to run it and be guaranteed a spot as a, as a potential major in a year or two's time, then now's the time to mm. sign up for the Sydney Marathon, get on board and, uh, and do it. So I know Cara and I can't do it because we fly out a week or two later to do Chicago Marathon, but Tony, at that sort of a deal, you've got to think it's not a bad, uh, bad price, eh? Yeah, I is it a free entry as well as a guaranteed it's as entry? Well as a guaranteed oh, guaranteed entry. Did I, I say free? Yeah. Sorry, guaranteed I don't think entry. It's a free entry. I think it's a guaranteed entry. Yeah. So you're not getting a free entry. You still have to pay for it. You're just guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was trying to hype it up so they get more people entering. <laughs> <laughs> and but then it's guaranteed. And then. Guaranteed. So the, the current price, um, I looked on their website at the moment. It's one hundred and seventy dollars to run the marathon this year, Australian dollars. Which is about fifty cents US dollars, or about ten pence uh, in the British <laughs> currency. Uh, don't quote me on those numbers, but um, mm. yeah, definitely, definitely worth considering if you want to get in in the future years. It will be huge if it is announced as a major. It will yeah. sell out very quickly. Uh, I talked about one hundred and seventy dollars for entries. That's for Australian uh, residents. For international residents, it's two hundred and ten dollars. I don't know what the difference is. You still got to run the same course. You still get the same experience, but there's a mm. forty dollar uh, extra fee for internationals. Yeah, I, so I think we just added Sydney to our um, our our year. To be honest, so um, Nikki, my remedial massage therapist, isn't happy with us running four marathons this year, but it looks like <laughs> that's what we're doing. So. Doesn't everybody run four marathons in a year? <laughs> <laughs> no, we shouldn't be encouraging everybody to do that. It will clog up the race entries. But at the same time, um, for those who are starting out, one to two marathons is sort of the recommended dose mm. for, for beginners. But we don't Very want much our, so. our guests on our show, or our listeners <laughs> on our show, to, uh, to go off and start signing up for everything. <laughs> mm. um, and the last little bit of news that I've got there is um, Parkrun in Australia this week just been uh, had their one millionth finisher at Parkrun events here in Australia, uh, which is huge news. You know, Parkrun in Australia started mm. about 12 years ago here in Australia, 12, 13 years ago. Um, and in that time, they started like they do in every other country with one event, and and then with time comes a second, a third, a fourth. Uh, we now have over 450 events in Australia, and to hit a million finishes is huge. That's that's I can't think of too many other sports that would have had that sort of a growth in that sort of short time period. Uh, Tara and I, I guess as a combined total, we've contributed 788 finishes mm -hmm. as a combined total between us to that one million. So um you know we're nearing the 800 mark which means we've got 400 our 400th park run coming up in the next probably six weeks or so five six weeks wow. so, yeah that'll be a big celebration yeah. event so that's impressive yeah. that is really impressive yeah. so um yeah if you haven't tried park run we'll talk a little bit more about it in next week's episode mm -hmm. um but um yeah definitely Parkrun is something that changed our life and and made us uh, fitter, healthier, stronger, meet new people, make new friends, travel the world. Um, it's definitely one of those things that if you haven't tried it before, it's a great thing to do. And I've contributed zero to that total. <laughs> and uh, I, I was actually thinking that it could have been one, but anyway, it wasn't to be. Hey, let's talk about strength training. What do you think? That's what we've... Yeah. Um, We've got as the title of the episode, and um, if you think back to last week, and even if you think back to a couple of episodes ago, ago when we were talking about strength training, I, I think last week we had a bit of a laugh about you can pick the runners at the gym, and that's when Travis dresses very much like a runner. But, yeah, <laughs> strength training is really, really important. So let's talk about strength training so runners benefit from strength training and this is one of the things that i really wish i i knew i think i made mention that when i first started training for 
marathons, I just thought that if I started adding a kilometre a week, I'd get to 52 by the end of the year and I, I'd be right. And needless to say, I wasn't. So strength training focused on core stability, leg muscles, our quads, our hemis, our calves, hip muscles, glutes, um, anything that helps with balance and flexibility can help us um, enhance our overall performance. So let's talk with you two first because you have got a very um, routine. You've got a good disciplined routine around your running process. So let's talk about initially what is the strength training that you do religiously as part of your um, your core training work? So um, Tim and I will always, on a Monday morning, we do not run. We do our strength and stretch session is what we like to call it. So it will always incorporate, because Sundays is normally a long run day, it will always incorporate some gentle stretching, just loosening up those muscles. We also do a lot of bridge work, um, crab walks, lunges, squats, and all of that sort of stuff. But um, we have been fortunate enough, and for the listeners that have listened to this previously will know that I've fractured my back and my pelvis um, previously, and it was all on my left side. So um, when that actually happened, we were both seeing the same personal trainer at the gym, um, and he gave me a lot of strength work just for my left side because it was out of kilter from my right, obviously. Um that's when I started getting into the running. And so he taught me a lot about things like one-legged squats and, you know, just making sure that you're incorporating the right techniques for the right um, sport that you're doing, I guess. But don't forget about your upper body strength just because you're a runner. Um, you need your arms. You definitely need your arms because that's how you get up your hills. So... Recently, I've um, had some upper back problems and I'm like, oh, what's going on there? Went to the physio and she's like, you're very, very weak in the upper body. And I'm like, oh, okay, I've been forgetting to do the upper body. So my fault completely. Since seeing her for about two or three weeks and actually doing those strength exercises she's given me, my hill running has improved dramatically. So um, with... Our legs, I guess, squats and lunges, you don't need to do heavy weights. You just need to make sure that your body weight is enough for what you want to do. Um, make sure you're doing them correctly, like tuck your pelvis under, make sure that your legs are aligned with your knees, your feet are aligned with your knees, sorry, your hips are in the right position. Don't go and start squats and lunges if you're not in the right posi position because you're not going to do anything at all for yourself. Um Core work is really, really important. So things like planks, um, bridges, all of those sort of things. Um, there's a lot on YouTube that you can have a look at for runners exercises. But um, I do crab walks with resistance bands. So putting the bands around my legs and walking sideways in a squat motion. Um, upper body now, I do a lot of... Um, we call them little arms and big arms, and it's pretty much just pushing your arms against the wall and keeping your arms straight and flexing your shoulders back into you so you can feel your shoulder blades and then forward again. And it's just enough to sort of strengthen those muscles in the back there for yeah. you as well. Yeah, I think from a runner's point of view, it's not about bulking up. It's about working the muscles and strengthening the muscles, and there is a difference. You go to a gym... And there's definitely people there that are bulking up, right? They're looking for big muscles. Uh, and Tara's right. It's not about pumping weights and things like that. You can do weights and you can do um, cable machines and things like that. But really just using your own body weight and using your own strength to focus on particular parts of the body. So for for most runners, it's your, it's your calves, it's your quads, it's your hamstrings, it's your glutes it's your lower back and it's your core. And I think the thing that really switched it on for me a number of years ago was I was at, I don't know where it was, it was either the Gold Coast or one of the other major sort of marathons I've run in. And if you look at the elite females, because they're easier to see, <laughs> um, they tend to wear uh, crop tops and and, um, 
and runners, essentially, you know, short shorts. And every elite runner I see, particularly on the female side, tends to have a, a pretty good six pack. And that's a good indication to me that that's something that I needed to focus on. And, um, you know, whether it's just even sitting in the chair and just, you know, tensing your muscles in your, in your stomach and holding them for a while and, and building up strength that way, whether it's doing some basic hill taps and sit ups and those sorts of things, planks, um, working on your core becomes um, really critical and your back because they're the parts of the, the, that really control the leg movements from there. So for us, that's what we focus on. Uh, it's not about building up bulk. We don't want big bulky legs and big bulky abs, but we want to tone and really strengthen, I guess, and there is a difference. And I also think um, cross-training is really, really important for that strength work. So not just doing strength work like what we've been talking about, but things like cycling um, on a stationary bike with quite a higher resistance is really, really good because it builds a different muscle for you. You're sitting in a different position um, so you can focus on your core as well while you're sitting on that stationary bike. If you want to get out there on the road, absolutely go mm. for it. But um, mm. I'm just too scared to because of <laughs> cars um, and I'm a little bit of a sook that way. But look, my stationary bike, I love it. It's connected to tie fit as we all know but that there gives me a really good cross train and my leg muscles feel it as well um yeah what about you tony what what's your strength um i program? i think everything that you've just talked about has been in some way shape or form part of what we do i think resistant bands are our friend so crab walks and it's quite funny we'll go for a walk in the morning and then we'll both get in the lounge room and do crab walks and yeah. It's um, if the neighbors are looking in, they're probably having a bit of a laugh and at us, but um, but yeah, even just obviously core with planks and um, you know, just the old leg raises um, that we used to do at footy training, um, those things are just really vital for that. Um, so with the resistance band, we'll often do crab walks and then we'll do lunges. Um, I've now just started to do. Um, like a backwards lunge so I'll walk backwards and using the resistance band because that works once again different muscles to when you work forward so it's it but I, th I think the key is you've just got to try and find something that's going to fit in with your lifestyle that you can do quite easily so um, if we're talking about stretch I do a lot of stretch of an evening while we're watching tv I'll just I've got a little apparatus that sort of realigns my um my back and my legs and i do some stretching with that particular piece it's it's nothing um in terms of of cost it's just something that works for me and prior to using that i couldn't touch my toes i was that inflexible and with this piece of kit i can now actually occasionally touch my toes i won't say all the time but especially after a session with it i'll be able to get that flexibility back so i i think it's just about trying to find time what fits in with you um i think instagram is also another great source um youtube is a good source but i think instagram you see a lot of people just showing you three exercises to improve your running and it's like a little um 30 second video you get the gist of it and then you can go and try it in your own home so things like step overs uh, are really good if you you pretend there's something there and even better when you can add some resistance to it so yeah i think um I think there's a lot of positive. Sharon does yoga and uh, she does Pilates, um, once again, with, uh, with a good uh, friend of ours. And I think they're all additional. I tried to do yoga once or twice, and I just find it, you know, people say you look at people doing yoga and you think, oh, that must be easy. Yeah, it's not. No, it's not. No, nah. and you've got to be somewhat coordinated to get into some of the positions, and I just can't. I'm not that coordinated enough. Yeah. I'm the same. I struggle with it. But Pilates is very, very good, and there is many different types of Pilates as well. So, and same as yoga. But you've got your wall Pilates, you've got your reformer Pilates, you've got your floor Pilates. Um, so you don't actually have to spend a lot of money on pilates i know that you can um and same as yoga you don't have to spend a lot of money there is a lot of beginner apps out mm. there there's a lot of beginner 
things for floor and wall Pilates as well that you don't have to spend money on or a lot of money on. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money to do your strength work. A lot of it, um, as we've said before, is body resistance as well. So using your own weight because that's what you're pushing and propelling forward is what you need to strengthen. You don't need to be lifting, um, you know, 400 kilos of weight no. as you're leg mm. press or anything like that that's not going to help you as a runner it's probably just going to injure you and make you more tired so yeah. looking at what you need for what you do is completely different yeah and, and the thing i like about strength training when you're a runner is you can do little doses in short periods of time as you sort of alluded to there so even at work i'll get up from behind my chair if i've been sitting down for a while and just hold the chair and stand on my tiptoes mm. and, and go and down on my tiptoes a little bit um, just to, to strengthen out and, and lengthen out my, my calves. Um, you know, I'll sometimes sit on the wall at work and do a wall squat and I'm squatting up against the wall and holding that for a minute at a time. And you have to do it once or twice and then that's done. And mm. it's the thing I like about it, you can build it in. As I said, I'm, I'm, I drive uh, up to an hour and a half each way now at the moment going, going to and from work each day. So when I'm sitting in the car, I'm... I'm tensing up, tensioning up my stomach muscles and my core, and really crunching it together as long as I can while I'm driving it. Yeah. Um, and I'm finding that alone builds up strength, but at the same time, I've got to then work my back a little bit as well to to strengthen up my back so that I'm not too far forward on my stomach and and not strong enough on my back. So yeah, it's about remembering that there's two sides to it all, right? There's always a quad and a hamstring, or there's always a core and a back. Mm. it's um interesting it's about finding time isn't it so when we do our grocery shopping and sharon's making a choice on the shelf often i'll just because i'm pushing the trolley and that's my job it's fine and, too. Uh, yeah <laughs> so i'll i'll just start doing single um, leg calf raises and yeah. um or i'll push the the trolley down an aisle on my tippy toes to try and build that calf strength so it's just about trying to find your time um it always uh, like, like like i can never understand and i shout out to all the ladies here and uh, maybe some of the blokes that wear high heel shoes because that must be just working your calf muscles every time you put them on and um yeah every now and again i'm thinking to myself maybe i should just wear sharon's high heel shoes around the house <laughs> and that's going to build up my calves but um she's yeah. not going to appreciate that in any way shape or form um no. i do um as you said though before when you're sitting there in the afternoon or the evening um instead of just sitting there on the couch watching tv you can sit on the floor and you can do a lot of these exercises yeah. you can stretch on the floor instead of sitting on the couch you can do your you know you can do a lot of strength work on the floor in front of the tv without any other equipment yeah, just at all band. just resistance band you can sit there and do your so there's no such thing as not enough time um unless you're literally getting up going to work coming home eating dinner and going straight to bed there's mm. always time for this sort of stuff um as tim said he gets up from his desk um i do the same thing at work i'll get up and i'll do some squats or lunges up and down the hallway and everyone looks at me like what are you doing <laughs> i don't really care um even on the long haul flights um to yeah, yeah. our overseas trips we will always i will lunge up and down the um aisles and people will look at me and go what are you doing and i'm really don't care because i will never see these people again so yeah. And, and that's why you, and that's why you always wear a marathon shirt when you're traveling long distance, and people at least now are their runners. <laughs> or at least crazy. <laughs> yeah. but, but I don't want to discount the gym either. The gym is still a great place to go for runners. It can be a bit daunting. You do stand out. I do go with my son every once in a while to the gym, and I do feel a bit uh, the odd one out when everyone else is there trying to bulk up. Um, but you can use things like free weights and dumbbells mm. and kettlebells for exercises mm. you can do it with your lunges and your squats to build up a bit of strength. Um, you know, resistance machines for leg presses and leg curls. But again, you don't need to add huge amounts of weight. It's about doing repetitions rather than lots of weight. So instead of doing 
you know, 100 kilos at 10 reps, you might do only 50 kilos at 20 reps or 25 reps and, and do three sets of those. That will build up strength in the gym and that's how you do it. So lighter weights and more repetitions will give you the strength that you need for running. The other good thing with um, a gym is they do have personal trainers there or people that are on the floor watching what you're doing. So if you're doing the incorrect exercise, they can usually correct you. They will actually see, oh, this is not good. What are you training for? Let's correct this posture or whatever as well. So the gym is really, really good, especially for those that are starting out and don't know technique. Um, I do recommend probably going to a physio or to a PT and just getting some really good techniques and tips and tricks, especially if you are starting out. You don't want to be doing these exercises and doing them incorrectly because you can do some very bad damage to your body um, if you are going to be doing the wrong um, technique and the wrong things for what you want to be doing it for. Yeah. It is funny, and I don't want to put off all the CrossFitters out there, but you can tell the CrossFitters when you're running a marathon who have got the big body weight and you think they'll go off really quick, but they inevitably don't have the endurance or the fitness later on because they carry a lot of mass and you, know, you see them and they get to the finish line, but they probably didn't get there as quick as what they were thinking they were going to get there at. Mm. So it's that compromise between do I bulk up or do I just strengthen up? And there is a difference, um, but it's about making sure you get it right. Things like um, balance balls are good to sit on and, and to, to work your core and your back and, and they work on it. And even um, are they stability balls, those sort of um, BOSU balls, boards that you stand on with the yeah. little half, BOSU balls. Um, they're really good because you can stand on them, get your balance, and you, you hold your balance and you, you're switching your muscles on and off constantly mm. while you're trying to do that, whether it's your core and your leg muscles. So so those sort of things at gyms can help. Um, for us as well, um, you know, as we said, resistance bands, but just um, building it into that routine, it, it's, it's critical. And whether it's going off to the gym on a Monday night or whether it's <laughs> – Getting up on a Monday morning like Tara and I do, it's about building that into your routine. And after three, four weeks, it just becomes natural and part of what you do. Sure. For us, we, yeah. only, we only do strength work probably once or twice a week. Um, we'll do stretching most days. And when we're stretching, there's inevitably some strength work in that stretching that we do. But generally, our main session is once a week for strength work and little bits through the week, as we said, at work or, or, or wherever we can. And that's all you need. You don't need a lot more than that. And there is also the um, apparatuses that uh, if anyone's listened to the episode that we had Sarah Jane um, Hipwell on, she was talking about a TRX, um, which is like a little miniature gym, I guess you could call it, that you can have at home and it takes up very little space and it's very easy to use. Um those sort of things are really, really good as well, especially if you know what you're doing with them and you're committed to using them. They're definitely worth the money. Mm. Yeah. And there's, it's interesting, uh, especially squats are incredibly beneficial. They're one of the best exercises you can be doing out there. And a lot of people don't necessarily go deep enough because they, they might be stiff. They, they might have some pain. So I've got some... And I think they're like they're a diagonal slant board, and it's just made from foam. You can get them as as quite a cheap sort of a um, yoga pack most of the times, and that just gets your the the heels and your foot on a slant, so that it allows you to get deeper in your um, in your uh, squat without necessarily putting too much stress on your ankles and your calves. So so there's little things out there that can certainly help, but and you can also um, use what you're saying like there, Tony, you can use a chair so that your mm. bum just touches the chair and then you come up. So you don't actually sit on that chair. You just mm. use it just enough to sit on and then up again. So there's plenty of ways you can use the, if you can't do a push-up on the floor, do it on your knees. If you can't yeah. do it on your knees, do it on the wall. There is a lot of ways that you can um, manoeuvre and manipulate strength work to work for you you don't have to be the strongest runner you just have to be a runner that can be strong enough to run so mm. um nobody's going to remember if you can bench press 400 or 100 kilos or whatever it is that bench pressing does 
they will remember you as a person who crosses that finish line with a great big smile on their face and not hurting. So yeah. that's how I look at it anyway. And, yeah. and I think the other thing is, particularly if you go to the gym, comparison is not what you want to be doing you don't want to compare yourself to others you don't want to do what others are doing comparisons are thief of joy very much so at the gym you're going in as a runner everyone else at the gym might be doing other things to bulk up for other reasons or to strengthen other other things so just stick to the routine do what you're meant to do as we said it's not about building up book if you look at you know Iliad Kipchoge you look at the elite runners out there, they weigh only about 50 to 55 kilos, <laughs> um, but they're strong and they're lean because they do repetitive light intensity, low intensity sort of weights. Yeah. Um, body weights is what they mostly do. So, um, but they're lean, they're muscle, they're, they're full of muscle, but they're lightweight. And that's what you want to look for when you're running. Yeah. So I think we've um, talked about a number of really good tips and I, I hope that um, everyone listening to this has been able to take maybe a snippet or two or reinvigorate their desire to be doing some strength training. Find the time when you can is probably the biggest one. Have a couple of really good uh, solid routines. You know, it might be five exercises that may take you 20 minutes at a time and then just try and slot in that 20 minutes, you know, once or twice a week and and start. The key is to start from somewhere. And it, it's not about at all saying I need to be at the gym for an hour. It just means that, hey, I've got I, – I watch um, Bing, Big Bang Theory at 9 o'clock every week night and I've seen them all 3,000 times, so I'll just do it while that's on because I can concentrate. So great tips from Team Ellis and maybe one or two from uh, Tony. So <laughs> hey, now before we finish up, before we finish up, we always get a tip from Tim and we call it Tim's Tip. It comes out on Instagram every Tuesday from the episode after, um, sorry, the Tuesday after each episode um, it is getting a little bit of a cult following. Um, so it is something that we'll continue to do because it is absolutely beneficial. So, Tim, over to you. Tip. I still, I still, vote, I still vote for Tim's joke, but I, no. I'm happy with Tim's tip. So. <laughs> uh, so my tip tonight is about building foundations. And as a runner, it's all about building a foundation, whether it's building a foundation of endurance and, and distance over time or in this case like tonight's episode it's about building a foundation of strength and the core is the core of what you need to focus on essentially um so you know like like building a building you need a strong foundation that you base everything off but you need a strong core in the middle to hold everything together uh you need to build up your strength slowly and um keep building it up via that weekly routine that we've talked about tonight. Um, as I said, the core is central. You've got to work on the core, but you've also got to work on the back uh, as well. Um, don't go too hard too early is my other big tip. Um, a lot of people will jump into this and go, I need to, I need to do what everyone else is doing. I need to go in and, and pump extra weights. If you're starting to strain and you're carrying and, and you're doing weights, you're doing it the wrong way. You need to, you need to back off on the weight. And, and build it up over time. And I guess the other key thing is when you are kick starting off, uh, it's going to hurt for a day or two afterwards as the DOMS kicks in. Just like running, um, when you run, you get DOMS, you're going to get DOMS from doing weight work and strength work. So be mindful that you'll get DOMS, but also be more mindful that if you start running a day or two after you've done a strength session and your body's got DOMS and... and um, you start hurting, it's going to affect your running as well. So just be mindful of that, slow it down and get used to it. Um, and you, know, you will fatigue quicker and likely get a possible injury if you are running with Dom in those instances. So mm. you know, that's my, my tip. And I guess if for those who may know what Dom's is, Dom's is delayed onset of muscle soreness. And it's basically that pain you get a day or two after you've run a hard race or whether you've done a hard gym session, it's where your muscles are still leaching out the lactic acid that's uh, that's accumulated in them. 
So I'll just add one more thing to that. Just be aware that um, you know the difference as well between DOMS and an actual injury from weight training or resistance training. Don't train through something that you think is a pulled muscle or um, a tear. Um, please mm. just make sure that DOMS actually just feels like heavy bruising. bruising. Um, if you're continuing on with that pain for um, after doing your strength work for more than a day or two, it's probably not DOMS. It's probably you've done some damage. So as Tim said, back it off, repair and recover yourself, and then start again. And if it does continue, see a physio. Yeah. Mm, great advice. Great advice. Now, coming up in the next couple of weeks, um, as I mentioned early in the episode, Tim has put out his put on his PR hat and started to send out some pretty bold requests so um, so even though I'm going to pass to Tara to talk about what we have planned for next week I think we're all pretty flexible at the moment so if what we're talking about next week differs from what Tara says tonight <laughs> that's okay because we will ultimately do the episode that Tara is going to talk about it just may not be next week if the if some <laughs> right people land in the right place buckets so to speak so we're keeping you in suspense a little bit but tara what have we got planned for next week <laughs> well it's not the first time i've been known to talk about something that's completely irrelevant on the show so i will talk about the right thing what we think is going to be happening anyway um we're going to be talking about my favorite thing ever which is apart from running and well, me. it is running and me oh and you yeah, right there. um it is running it's park run um Believe it or not, there are still many runners out there, Tony, <laughs> um, <laughs> who have never experienced parkrun. We will share our experiences of parkrun and talk about how building parkrun into your weekly routine can make a massive difference in your training program. And I can't wait to do this episode. So whether it be next week or it will drop at some point, I love parkrun yeah. and I will talk about this all the time. So yeah. I'm good. And, and looking at the, the stats of where our listeners come from, there are countries where we have listeners where they don't have parkrun. So it'll be interesting for them maybe to hear about parkrun because we keep talking about it but may not yeah. be sure what it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And as ex-run directors, um, well, you know, if you want to start up a parkrun, go for it. It's the best thing ever. Volunteering at parkrun love it it's really a lot of fun so yeah absolutely absolutely i'm starting too early aren't i <laughs> so so is it um tara just to confirm so in the list of things you love it would go running park run and then tim is that the way it goes um last week you were trying to injure me <laughs> food and i like bananas <laughs> oh, okay so tim number five i did <laughs> of course we're just having a, long a little time. <laughs> but uh just having a little bit of fun but oh, that's interesting but... tara got an email today about chicago marathon saying you're in and i haven't got mine yet so Ooh. i'm going <laughs> it's not i am you'll be All there right we know we know the right people we'll be right <laughs> that's uh that's exciting i I'd love to do Chicago again, so maybe that's uh, a 2025 thing. But that's going to wrap up our episode for tonight. As always, video of this episode will be available at Spotify and YouTube, and it's highly recommended to watch the video just to watch Tim's facial um, features as they go through the um, uh, through the episode. It's it's quite um, entertaining in its own right. Audio, of course, is on Apple, Amazon, Google, um, and most other <laughs> popular <laughs> podcast platforms. Remember, every step forward is a victory. Lace up, hit the road, and we'll catch you on the ne next episode. Until then, happy running. Happy, happy running. Bye.